take you to chapter one. Don't forget that we are in this series of chemistry. Because today we are taking chapter one. Last week we took chapter two, and I recall in chapter one, last class, we talked about measurement, accuracy, and precision. We also learned one important thing about accuracy and precision, and that is the fact that accuracy tells us how close a measured value is to the true value. And why precision is how close or the agreement between values. We also try to relate it to errors. We talked about error, we talked about systematic error, we talked about random error. Now today, we are going to be handling a very important topic that we have heard about, seen, talked about it in various levels of our class. And that is matter. So we're talking about matter, nature of matter, and phase change. Phase change. When I say phase change, I mean phase change. Phase change. So nature of matter and phase change. Now, if I ask everybody, what is the nature of matter that you know? Everybody will say, ah, solid, liquid, and gas. Solid, liquid. And gas. Everybody will say that with their full chest. Ah, sorry, liquid and gas. But we also know that we have more than three. And that is, the fourth one is plasma. 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 So in this course, we see how we can talk about them. Sorry, liquid, gas, and plasma. Now, the reason why you can easily say that this is a solid, this is a liquid or gas, is one of the basic features you can see about this state of matter. You can easily say that, ah, this is a solid, this is a liquid, this is a gas. For example, if I give you a plastic of water, and we learned one something very important, that liquid takes the shape of the container. You will say, ah, oh, this is a liquid, this is, Liquid, ah, this liquid that does not have any shape. If I want to even put it in a plastic, any plastic of different shape, it takes the shape of the container. That's why that why is that possible? Because of what? It is a liquid. And we also note the fact that liquid is held by a weak intermolecular force. Solid, this is a board. We can say this is a solid. Why? Because you can clearly see the shape of this board. And the reason why is because solid, the molecules are held in a fixed point. That is, that held what they call strong intermolecular forces. Strong intermolecular forces. Now, I believe that we can dive in into the properly asked questions, where we can still talk more about all this um, nature of matter there. Let's start with the first question there. Which of the following is a fundamental atomic particle? So it's a fundamental atomic particle. Okay. And proton and the rest. The first option there is quark, X boson, neutron, and electron. I say that again. Quark, X boson, neutron, and electron. Fine. Electrons are fundamental particles. They are fundamental particles called leptons. Now, I'm looking at the options and seeing how we can get the answer. You can see that there's electron there, but they say one thing. Basic. That's it. They said one thing that option there is a fundamental atomic particle. Now, protons and neutrons, they consist of smaller particles called quarks. Quarks. Called quarks. So quarks, quarks, lepons and boson are the three, are the what? The three fundamental particles. Please don't joke with this. Are the three fundamental particles. When you see this in question, please don't joke with this. So the answer to that question is what? It's quarks. It's quarks. So it's quarks. They are the basic that fundamental that the ones, quarks. The answer to that question is quarks. So please. Note this very, very well. Don't joke with this. Please note this. Please note this very, very well. So quarks, lepons, and bosons. That question is saying X boson. No, person on his own. So 
quarks is a very good answer with regards to what fundamental atomic particle. The next question, Jay, which of the following particles is stable? A neutron, B proton, C pion, do muon. Stable. The answer is proton. Proton is the most stable, is the most stable particle. Yeah. Is the most stable. Proton. Please note this. Note these protons, these quarks, they are all fundamentals of matter. So that is fundamental particles of matter. So that's why we are talking about them very well. Very, very well. So because they are probably seen in the OBJ questions. So when you see that question in the exam, oh okay, is this that is this so can easily what relate to it? The next question there is that so the following occurs when its energy is removed. Gas to liquid, liquid to solid. What are they trying to do there? So a good idea of question is how the nature of matter change. They change from one state to another. How do they change? Is one thing that is being talked about very, very well in the part of this course. In the part of this course. Let me quickly, quickly pick out the diagram here of that question. So gas to liquid. Gas to liquid and liquid to solid. So this is option A, option B. So what would be the what would be the first change for A and B respectively? So from gas to liquid, what would be the first change? From liquid to solid, what would be the first change? Now from liquid to solid is what is known as freezing. So if you take a cold, you take a water, you put it into the fridge or a medium where it can become cold, it turns to an ice. That is called what? Freezing. Why you pick a gas to a liquid that is called condensation. Condensation. So look at the option. Two of them works like that. Condensation. Let's look at the option. Condensation, freezing. That is option C. So C is the best answer. Option C. Water is different from other substances because. Now, you look at the options there. It is more dense as a solid than a liquid. No. It is not more dense as a solid than a liquid, no. It is more dense as a gas than a liquid, no. The better of that question is, it is less dense as a solid than liquid. So when it's in a solid form, it is less dense as compared to a what? To liquid. So please, note all these things. Very, these are application questions for such, um, for this topic. So it is less dense as a solid than a liquid. So in, I'm not going to tell you that liquid is denser than what? A solid. So please note that very, very well. Now, already asked questions. The second part of it, which state of matter can be compressed? Which state of matter can be compressed? The state of matter that can be compressed, look at gas, liquid, solid. Look at your chair. Can you easily compress your chair? No. But you can easily what? Compress your gas. And that's why you can go to a fuel station and easily take the hose, put it into your gas chamber and easily what refill your gas because it's what is compressed you can go to people that play football you can take your ball go to where they pump air and pump air into your ball that is why because gas can be what compressed so the answer to that question is gas the molecule the solid vibrate against each other is that true or false yes it's true it's true the molecules in the solid they always vibrate against each other so why? Because you look at the fact that the molecules of this solid, they are held in a fixed position. They are held in a fixed position. For example, you have something like this. You have something like this. Let's say this. Let's use this. Let's use this. And you'll see that this, this dot here, this dot here, this dot here, this dot here, they are held that position there. They are held in that fixed position there. So they vibrate against each other. One even funny experiment. One funny experiment is, if for instance, if you are staying on a, uh, let me say, a table, you put your phone there and someone calls you, your phone is vibrating. Someone that is in the other end of the table can feel the vibration of the of the phone. He can feel it. Yes, it's possible. So you need to not forget that true, that solid can vibrate against each other. Now, another question again. Matter actually states, when a sufficient amount of thermal energy changes, true or false? True or false? True or false? Mm. 
question. The answer for that question is true. It's true. Then when there is a thermal change, it's possible. It's possible. That's why you are able to what? To do what they call boiling or evaporation. You can easily put heat on your liquid and your what? The liquid leave as what? As a gas. Because of what? Thermal <laughs> energy. So it is true. That's a true question. The next question, if exposed to heat, most liquids tend to do this. If exposed to heat, most liquid tends to do this. Liquid generally, they expand when heated. They expand when heated, but they contract when they are cool. They contract when they are cool. They contract when they are cool. So if you look at that option there, it said, if you go to the more liquid tends to what? They tend to what? To expand. So when they are, when they, when you heat liquids, they what? They expand. But when you leave them to cool, they will what? They will con, they will contract. They will contract. So please, Note that part very well. When you heat, expand. When you cool, contract. Please note that very well. So, question one that is a very good area of exam question. So, you need to know your examiner. Not all examiner will give you word for word. Oh, solid, liquid, gas. What is the phase change? No, that is an improvisation. That is an, uh, you can see that there's a change in the question there. You can see that that is an ice, water, a glass of water, and a ketsu. Ice, glass of water, and a ketchup. So you can see clearly that this ice there, the other the ice is giving us is showing like like it's losing, it's melting or something. You can see something like that it is melting or something. Let's quickly draw that diagram. Let's draw that diagram and, and see. So it's been having an ice. Water, then we have our, don't mind my drawing, room, my ketsu, our ketsu. You can see the ketsu is giving us some, some, some smokes, and that is what gas. This is all she knows that this is gas. She knows that it's is solid, and then she knows that it is what? Liquid. So that question that I'm showing us number. That will tell us that, ah, this number, what does this number signify you now that I load there? What does it signify? What does it signify? We let's number it one, two, six, five, four, three. Now, ice. We don't know that is before from liquid to uh, to solid one is freezing, but one is what freezing. Number two, you can see that liquid the ice now is turning back to water. That is called melting, melting. It's called melting. So from what ice to water is called melting. It's called melting. The next thing is. Three, okay, three. From ice to gas, that is from solid to gas, from solid to gas, is known as what we call sublimation. 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 Four, from gas to solid, did I tell you that was what, con, that is, sorry? From gas to solid, is called deposition. Deposition. Deposition, please. Don't joke with this. Their position. Their position. Number five. Number five, from gas to liquid is called condensation. Condensation. Why from liquid to gas is called evaporation. 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 So this is the six phase changes in matter. The six phases is matter. This is it: freezing, melting, sublimation, deposition, condensation, and evaporation. So a good exam now will test you on things like this. And that's an, and that also test you is with regards to phase change. Now you look at the next question, the question two. That question was gotten from 2020. And that question, it was a theory question. And in that question, you can see the way 
the plot is. The plot of pressure against temperature. And you can see that clearly in that plot, you can see solid, you can see liquid, you can see gas and vapor. So we are seeing different thermal changes in that plot. That plot is what they call a phase diagram. It's called a phase diagram. Please don't joke with this. A phase diagram. Now, a phase diagram can be complex. Can be complex. Can be complex in the sense that it can be more than a phase diagram of more than one component. It can be two components, can be three components. So, but in this case here, for what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing only one component, single component. Single component here, generally. We don't want to beat around the bush for double no. Single component. So you have to know the phase changes in single component. Now, the question there is asking the phase diagram above is for a one component system. Do not have the answer to component system. I'll be careful. So one component system. Z. What is TC? <laughs> you can see in that plot that you are having a plot of temperature. And at a point, you are seeing TC. You are seeing TC. And you asked a good question that what is TC? TC there means critical temperature. You can see it in the plot there. You can see how the TC is going towards the right. You can see the temperature there's 28 Kelvin. But let me really just show it on the board here. Let me show it on the board here. You can get a glimpse of what I'm talking about here. You can see that. You can see that. Um, we have plot of this. We have this 298 Kelvin. We have this TC. And this TC here is called critical temperature. Critical temperature. What is that critical temperature? What is critical temperature? So critical temperature of a substance. If you look at the plot there, you can see vapor, you can see gas. So in your substance is the highest temperature is the what the highest temperature at which a substance can exist as a liquid i think that again i think that again that critical temperature from the plots we have there of a substance is the highest temperature a substance can exist as a liquid so that is the highest temperature can exist as a liquid so that's what we call critical temperature i want to quickly insert something sometimes this is a question. We are looking for a way to what to explain it further, so we will not have problems when we see such question again. Now, sometimes you can see that. Let me just draw something. You can see something like this, guys. You can see something like this. You can see something like this. You don't like this. Like this. I can see something like this. So you are seeing something like this. Now, you can observe one thing here, that there will be a point where this meets, the three of those things meet, where the whole solid, liquid, and gas will meet. So, but the project is unable to show us that. They're unable to show us that. So, there will be a point where the solid, liquid, and gas plots meet. Where the three of them meet, okay, it can be this, it can be this place. I think this is the place here. This place is what they call triple point. It's called triple point. The point at which the solid, liquid, and gas plot is meeting. It's called triple plot, triple point. It's called triple point. So we know we always talk about this uh, triple point. And we need to also note that triple point is never the same thing as critical point. It's not the same thing at what? As critical point. Now, I've said two things today. Triple point, critical point, then I want to show them on the plot. So you can see that there is sometimes at critical point. When can it be at critical point? When the absolute temperature, that is associated with the temperature, that is associated with the substance, I did that again, that critical point exists when the absolute temperature of the substance is equal to the critical temperature at that 
point. Ah, that is critical point. But what triple point where the three of them meet? Where the three of them meet? Like then question they explain under what conditions will Z sublime? Hmm. Under what conditions will Z sublime? Very corny question. If you look at this plot, you can look, look at the plot. You can see this is um, pressure. This is temperature. This is temperature. Now, if you look at the plot, um, you can see solid. You can see liquid. And you can see gas. Vapor is also there too. Now, a sufficiently low temperature, you can see it here. From solid to gas is, is um, we said earlier that from solid to gas is what? Is sublimation. So from this place to this place, you can see the distance of where the gas is. This is where the gas is. This point here. And you can see it is lower the pressure. That means a sufficiently low pressure from the plot that we have there, a sufficiently low pressure, a sufficiently low pressure, you can see that there's a sufficiently low pressure, there is no liquid. Liquid is above this plot here. Look at this. Look at liquid here. See liquid. It's above this place here. So a sufficiently low pressure, there is no liquid. And what is common here is what? Gas. And that is the condition at which sublimation can, at which sublimation can sublime. So the condition there is what? A sufficiently low pressure. And you can see the pressure, at a very low pressure, and you can see the temperature is going towards, going towards what? Higher temperature. So at that case, we can say that at a very low pressure, at a very low pressure and higher temperature, a, gas, a substance is what? Will sublime. A substance will sublime. So from the plot here, since there is no gas, since the substance can only exist as either a gas or a solid, then we can see that at that condition, that is sublimation. Then we go down there. What phase does Z exist at 298 Kelvin and 10 raised to power 5 Pascal? What state does it exist? At 298 Kelvin to 298 Kelvin to and 298 Kelvin here and 10 raised to power 5 Pascal. So we can see that at what point does Z exist? At 298 Kelvin and 10 raised to power 5 Pascal. The, the phase there is what is called liquid phase. It's what is called liquid phase. It's what is called liquid phase. From the plot, it's called liquid phase. Liquid phase. So the another question is what? Liquid phase. Liquid phase. So with that, we come to the end of such question. We can also talk about something again. I forgot to say critical pressure. Critical pressure. I know we are not seeing it in that place. Critical pressure. But let's talk about it. Critical pressure. So critical pressure is the pressure. So we learned about critical um, temperature. So the pressure required to liquefy a substance, the pressure required to liquefy a substance at its critical temperature is called critical what? pressure. So the, I think that again, that critical pressure is the pressure required to liquefy a substance at its critical temperature is called critical pressure. That is a very good area of question. So please don't joke with such question. So we can, lastly in this slide, another question, you can see I put notes there, notes, notes. There's notes one or two things from what we said so far today. Let's note them. The first note there is what? Electrons are fundamental particles called leptons. While protons and neutrons consist of smaller particles called what? Quarks. Quarks, leptons, and bosons are the three types of fundamental particles. I've said that before. There are the three types of fundamental particles. Liquids generally expand when it is. I said that earlier before, but I'm also trying to recall it so we can what, know about it again. So they generally expand when it is, or they contract when they cool, when they are cool. And they, lastly, a plot of pressure versus temperature, they provide what they call insight, insight on what? Thermal properties of a substance. And what are the thermal properties of a substance? We have triple points, critical points, critical pressure, um, critical temperature, 
So this is what you can see about it. So I will also ask, I want to give an assignment to this point, that let's go ahead, let's go and learn what is a supercritical, let me tell you, super, what, at what condition is supercritical fluid exist? At what condition does a supercritical fluid exist? An assignment for us to work, go through it. Supercritical fluid. At what point does it exist? At what point does it exist? Note the last slide of the note. You can see that I showed the plot. So that plot, please memorize the plot very well. And all what we've done to do on that plot, you can easily see it on that plot. Although that is, there's, there's a hint on what supercritical fluid can be because it's on the plot there. So I would like you to, to go ahead and what tell us the conditions for a supercritical fluid. So ladies and gentlemen, um, thanks for your time. So I will quickly give time for questions. So please, if you have one or two questions, I will please kindly um, type and send and let's quickly treat that before we call it a day. Thanks for your time, guys. I really appreciate it. So guys, in the absence of questions, uh, we call it a day. Thanks for your time, guys. We meet next week for HMO. So please don't miss the class, please. Thanks for your time, guys. Thank you.